Well, it is. Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to our Tuesday webinar, all about engagement on social media. So we're working on the assumption that many of you will be um, on social media. So here's all about a few tips uh, and, and how to uh, in, do your social media engagement. So if you go away after three quarters of an hour with a smiley face and learn something, it makes me happy. Right. But I quickly mentioned my paymasters. So as always, I am here on behalf of the Humber and East Yorkshire Growth Hub here to help local businesses. And really, you'll get a copy of the slides. So you can read much more detail, but there's three programs we're here for the Business Growth Scheme. So you've got Finance for Growth, ICT for Growth, and Business Growth, Grow My SME. So my advice to each and every one of you, if you're not already, is to make sure you're friends with your local account manager and they can help you along. So today, I hope you're going to keep a record of this. Ten ways in which you to engage on social media. Uh, so, without further ado, well, oh, I'll tell you what, I've had a busy morning. I've had a busy morning. Yeah, my, my son contacted me. He's, he's got, he said um, he's going to register for a donor card. He's a, he's a man after my own heart. And uh, I, I went to see my, um, I went to see a estate agent thinking about selling house. Do you know? My estate agent uh, didn't know um, uh, the abbreviation for the for, for apartment. Mm, I thought that's apt. Um, anyway, I've got a bit of a problem at home. Actually, just anyone on the webinar knows how to uh, fix broken hinges. If you do, my door's always open. So anyway, let's let's uh, let's move on. Let's move swiftly along because we can't have any enough of this uh, jesting. Uh, so uh, let's talk about our today's quiz. Today's quiz. And it, uh, it's all about, all about taglines. So if you fancy a little go for the next five minutes, we'll have a little warm up. Who's, which company's tagline is think different? And how many of you thinking he didn't mention the fact we're going to have a quiz and he hasn't got the slide in saying quiz? But it's here. Uh, who's, who's, nobody knows, nobody knows, yeah, nobody knows, nobody's on the chat line, so I'm just going to say it, I'll keep talking. You don't know if I'm different, it is, yeah, Apple, Do you know, yeah, there we go, Apple. Hmm. Do you know why there's a bite out of the Apple? Hmm? Yeah, well, there's lots of stories about the, the, the decision regarding the choice of logo. I think it was to differentiate itself from a cherry as well as having theological uh, connotations. There we go. Anyway, that's by the way. Which, oh, oh, which company is just doing it? Oh, does anyone? You know, Derek's on it. He, he's got his Derek. He knows his stuff. You know, and, you know, Heather as well. It is, yeah. I'd like pronounce this. Do you say it? Do you say it Nike or Nike? I don't know. No doubt. So you, can't, you can't tell me that over the chat line, can you? Unless you're you can be phonetic and what sort of stuff. Anyway, I only said that because you're worth it. <laughs> Come on then. Any smarty pants on this? Well, we're not going to get the phone right. Oh, look, tell me. Derek's got it. He has. Honestly. Eric, Sally, James, yeah. L'Oreal, yeah. Beats Al, his own label, doesn't it? Right. Eh, easy on this one. Come on. Every little helps. Every little helps. James and Sally, do you, you, you mean copying each other's work? Yeah. There we go. Actually, talking of the school. Talking of school, do you know, I was the handsomest guy, handsomest pupil in my class. You know that. I was actually homeschooled. Anyway, let's move on. Um, it's an old one, that one, never mind. As they all are. Uh, yeah, Tesco's. Yeah. Tessa Cohen, isn't it? That was what Tessa, Tesco stands for. Mm. <laughs> yes, a Vosprung Dirk technique. You might be a certain age to remember this one. But um, yeah, 
It is. It is. It is none other than Audi. Now, is there anyone who wants triple brownie points for telling me? Google it. Not allowed. What Vorsprung der Technique means? <laughs> Supplemental question here. Not even Derek will know this one. Danielle on Audi as well. Yeah. Anybody know? I'll push up for you out of your misery. Go on then. There you go. There you go. See, every day is a learning day. I, you know, I didn't know that this morning either. But, you know, advancement through technology. A bit like uh, Ich bin ein Berliner. I probably got it all right. So, hey, as just a message about the webinar here. Ha, ha, ha. Who's, 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 who's is that then? Come on. Come on. You know that one. Coca Cola? Heather and Sally? Hey, and by the way, quick shout out to Kay. If you speak Kay, you speak crazy. Forward technology, that was pretty darn good. We'll give you a quick shout out. So what was I'm loving it? Uh, I'm loving it was Coca-Cola, or not, as the case may be. Right, what's up next? I can't remember. No, no, and before you say it, it isn't Hull. Or when we stayed in, oh, I said I wouldn't mention football, would I? The happiest place on earth, yes. Have you ever been to the happiest place on earth? <laughs> the happiest place on earth. Do you know where that is? There it is. Is it really? No, it isn't there. <laughs> Only you. Only I better not say that because my favourite council is in uh, Disneyland. Yeah, the happiest place on earth. Mm. I don't like the taste of the pretzels there, though. Have you ever tried to eat them? Oh, I'll tell you what. Anyway, the diamond is forever. Anyone know that? Uh, Whose who's tagline is that? A diamond is forever? Yeah. Very good. Oh, he's on it. He's on it. Yeah. Do we say, if you, you know, for the ladies on this particular afternoon webinar, wasn't, it, wasn't, your, wasn't your engagement ring? meant to be a month's salary for your husband or husband-to-be. Wasn't that always the case? Was that the case? Mm, I think it was. Tradition has it. It was, well, yes, diamond is forever. The beers. And what's up next? Oh, I'll tell you what. I had them for me breakfast this morning. All fresh air, I think they are as well. So what have we got here? We've got Rice Krispies, yeah. But I know a memorable, a memorable tagline. It's been around for a wee while. Yes, they are snap, crackle, and pop. And finally, who knows the answer to this one? Belong anywhere. Who's going to get belong anywhere? Mm. The answer is none of you. <laughs> Got to make, can't make it easy, can we? Belong anywhere? Mm. Airbnb. There we go. Well, thank you for taking part in today's quiz. As always, hopefully a little bit of fun, but a little bit of learning as well. And today, all about 10 different ways to engage with social media. So without further ado, I'll take you on a little journey through the world of engagement. And hopefully when the slide goes, moves on. There we go, let's move on. There we go. I have used this analogy before and think uh, very much of social media as a big virtual pub. Or to quote the esteemed Mark Zuckerberg, I think he described it as a big virtual marketplace where there's lots of conversations taking place. So in the pub, as we're allowed to go there nowadays, think of it as that. Now, one thing I will make will be a common theme. What happens in a pub? Yeah, I know we get drunk, I know that. And, and yeah, we eat pork scratchings, yeah. But apart from that, yeah, we talk to each other. Mm. We don't want to be the pub bore, do we? We talk and we listen and we engage and we switch off when we're being patronised. So um, think of social media in those terms. And one of the issues often is, as I mentioned many times previously, it is, social media isn't just about posting. So, what is engagement? 
Well, engagement comes in different forms, but it so much depends on the platform you're on. It can often be a share, which you may see in the likes of um, Facebook. You can retweet, or, you know, with the likes of Pinterest, you can save. But really, the most important thing with engagement is it really should be meaningful. So that is what we hope towards. So here is an atypical example, I think, on Pinterest, where someone has actually saved um, you know, a post of my IKEA. Or actually, you can call it something else. You watch the adverts on TV, they say, don't say IKEA, they say IKEA, don't they? I went there recently as well. I went, I went to IKEA, I think. I hope it was Sheffield, you know, and they didn't have any gravy. I stood there and said, you can't. I've got my meatballs. I want gravy. So you can have cheese sauce. I said, I don't want cheese sauce. I want gravy. I've got cheese sauce. Anyway, so that was a quick, quick story, but I also got a cupboard that I had difficulty building as well. But that's not what we're here to talk about today. It wasn't the importance of being earnest. It was the importance of getting engagement. Yeah. So, what is the importance of engagement? Well, the aim of the game, surely, is to build a brand, customer service. So many businesses are operating their customer service. KLM were the first, I think, uh, as an output of the Ash Cloud. You see uh, a lot of the railway, uh, LMER, et cetera, using it. You there to expand your reach. You hopefully build not just... Uh, ephemeral relationships, but longer and more meaningful one. And probably the most important thing of engagement is capturing data. What works, what doesn't, who is engaged, who isn't. So how do you judge your current engagement rates? Well, I would strongly advocate, and apologies, this slide is a little blurred, but whatever social media platform you're on is to make sure you're studying the analytics. So this example on the screen is from Twitter. You can clearly see about the Manhattan type effect. Um, so you can see um, how many, how much activity is taking place into the, uh, the back end of Twitter and to clearly see, and you can see it elsewhere on Facebook and on Instagram, on Insights, you can see that. You can see these tweets have had so many impressions. Do you know what an impression is? Do you know what an impression is? Um, I want to, uh, you know, you know yeah, I want to tell you a story. Yeah, yeah, that kind of thing, you know. You dirty rat, you, that kind of thing. <laughs> I used to be able to do Tommy Cooper, but uh, can't do anymore. And you'd be, you'd be hard pressed to, to guess what those last two were as well. But, I think very much about trying to, first and foremost, measure your success. Remember what Simon says every Tuesday? You don't. Uh, uh, marketing is a science, not an art. Thank you. So you can also use the likes of Hootsuite or Buffer, great tools for managing your social media, but also measuring and looking for engagement. So here is a screenshot of the streams you can follow on Hootsuite. Hootsuite is a free tool to use, but you can actually have all your social media platforms, or certainly three of them for free, all on the same screen. You pry, uh, you're poised and ready to engage, but also, as you can see on the left-hand side of the screen, there is the aforementioned little graph all the time. See what works, see what doesn't. Or we can go back to school again. And you can come up with your own social media engagement rate. So it's the number of engagement sums them all up, divided by the number of followers times by 100. And that will give you a number. But you can also have that, but please, please, please do not do any marketing until you can measure or you've got some quantifiable measurement to say whether it's worked or it hasn't. Which leads us nicely on to measurable goals without mentioning 
that you know what on Monday night. So think about this. Got, I've got three goals with more than the number of penalties we've scored. Um, future engagement. So these three are atypical. Which audience are you looking to reach? Or what audience, what actions you wish for them to take? And how are you going to measure your success? Audience, actions, measurement. Think of those as every time you post or engage, think about those things. So first and foremost, let's tackle your audience. So think really carefully the type of customers or prospects you're trying to reach. Give you five tips here now. Which platforms do they use the most? Which pond are you going to fish in? What kind of accounts do they follow? So when you look at your social media and you look at your followers, you can see what they follow. It's to your very eyes on Twitter, LinkedIn, depending on the settings, you can see this information. And have you ever looked at the topics that they are engaged in? And what they're the type of posts and content they are likely to engage with. The answers about your audience are all in front of your own eyes. You just have to dig for them. You can see the, the, who your audience is, what they're using, what they're following, the type of topics they're engaged with through hashtags or, or, or uh, and you can see what where where they're um, where they're active. You can see it's very easy actually with social media to pick up an assessment of your audience. And interesting enough, how do they communicate? For those of you who are millennials or may tend to communicate in a slightly different way than as old is. So if you're using GIFs, whatever it might be, there are five things in which to look and analyze your audience. So then by knowing this information, you'll know how best to engage with them. You're seeing the behavior. Now if you turn the clock back to the good old days when Simon started his marketing, he didn't have any of this information. I can't do it. So, but you may wish to look at two particular platforms, Sprout Social. So like, you know, the worst thing about Christmas, you know, is having to eat a Sprout. Oh, God. Anyway, uh, Sprout Social and then BuzzSumo. Two platforms to use where you can undertake social listening. You can also, as I mentioned, with Buffer and Hootsuite. So you've got plenty of tools around you to have a one-stop shop. So now, so we know what engagement is. We know how we're going to measure it. But now let's talk all about how you can create engaging content. This is a blog. But you can see it's very visual, a blog about business and consulting, it's not dry, it's not the Canterbury Tales. You know, it is very much about the things So all the time. It's the classic thing that oh, engineering marketing, think of it very much as a newspaper headline, it's about the image, it's about the description, it's drawing people in. And that's just something that could be construed as being fairly conservative as a piece of documentation. So when I'm thinking really carefully about what you're going to write, what you're going to post, how are you wanting to make other people feel? And this is the question about getting the tone of voice absolutely right, how things translate. Sometimes it's worthwhile to do a little trial, have someone to look at it before you post it out there. So what are you trying to do? Trying to make people laugh, trying to make them cry, trying to make them engaged. What's the name of the game? So how do you do this? Well, I'll take you through a few of these things. One thing you may wish to do is to ask questions of your audience. And you can see the likes of Scholistic here. You know, what will you read today? Fantastic image. I prefer to the old, any of your parents love all this kind of stuff. And you can see 
ask a question of your audience so you can seek engagement. You may wish also to show behind the scenes. Yeah. So those of you, anyone been to Newcastle recently? Newcastle? See the 79-year-old Harrison Ford, yeah, Indiana Jones 5. He's been there drinking in the pubs by the quayside, you know, gallivanting around Bamber Castle. So just a, just a bit of information there for you. Not very really relevant, but I thought I'd say it. So here you are behind the scenes. Have hey, all you cool cats, you know it's National Pet Day. So here you've got a, a business showing you a little bit behind the scenes. It's quite common for many of you businesses to show what the, you cannot see on your website. So how about behind the scenes? Or oh, focus very much on trending topics. Which is probably the best example of this where you can see exactly what's happening there. And here was a fantastic example from the US when there was a power cut at the major sporting event instantly Oreo putting out, you can still dunk in the dark. So it was very apposite and often the best social media is all about speed and timing. And how about good old branded graphics? Shown this slide many times, many of you will be using Canva, C-A-N-V-A. Don't put boring posts out there use some of the tools to help you. Makes your posts so much more engaging and more of this later. Now, we are wired frontal lobes and brain, all that stuff in the old cortex and things, same words that you understand now, but we are wired to listen to stories. So even for an online bookkeeping business, Emily turned her passion into a business. Not the Emily of Bank Plus, but Emily there. So you can tell a story that people can identify with. All these are tools to use in terms of, and as I have learned to my cost, humor doesn't always travel. But uh, stories about photo bombing, always worth the risk. You know, you see probably the most engaging posts out there are the ones that are quirkiest and most humorous, but it is always dangerous ground humor because it doesn't always appeal to everybody. It's just having a cathartic moment. So when you're posting, please endeavor to make things eye-catching. A few examples to share with you. Look at Starbucks. What here we go. What a fantastic use of colour. You know, you've drawn um, to the Frappuccino. You know, and you can see that it was a driving force of some of their campaigns. This is about the visuals, not necessarily about the taste. So it you know, gets you gets the old juices flowing just by just the visuals. So think really carefully about doing some visuals. Even here on the travel channel for Twitter, just you, rather than just bland posting here, it is using slightly different graphics to make sure the tweet stands out. Very simple stuff. And I'm on commission by Oreo. But there we are, you know, unusual. Photography, again, drawing people in. So all these different tools you can use if you to make your posts engaging. But if you want the single most significant tip of the day, is never forget the app sign. We're back to the pub and we're standing there having a drink talking to somebody in our big virtual pub. You want to mention somebody else. Next time you post, please ensure you are tagging, mentioning other people or companies, bringing them into the conversation. Because if you want reach, you want brand, mention other people. It is the one thing I've seen probably the greatest failing for many people when they're posting is just to post in a singular format, but not to actually mention others. 
There we are, there in the fluorescent. But you can also make the most use of visuals. There's an example from Walt Disney. Yeah, he's got two mentions today, old Walt. But you know, you've got more space on, on LinkedIn here. Again, they're making the most use of it. But again, you've got a great opportunity there with images, hashtags, and again, to make the most use of the space you have. Now, in terms of your actual posting, authenticity is probably the common theme or the common strand you can have. Now, this is where I would use the adage and plan to stay in your lane. What does he mean by stay in your lane? Well, for example, if you are a, whatever business you may be in, you have a certain degree of expertise. So if you're a plumbing business or an architect's business or a you know, personal trainer, you probably don't start talking about subjects that are completely alien. So you become your specialist in your field, your niche marketing. That doesn't mean to say you can't talk about um, football or politics, you know, politics is always a tricky one, or other subjects, but you probably want to be perceived to the outside world as an expert in your field. That's why people are drawn to you in the first place. So there's a particularly uh, good example worth checking out on Instagram. Marie Folio does a lot of um, videos, a lot of wise words, but again, giving out advice, but only on her special subject, personal development, being an entrepreneur, knowing your, to quote Clint Eastwood, every man must know his limitations. So just become an expert in your field. Now, time is the biggest enemy of the small business. How to engage properly, please take the time to do so. Not just I'm posting on Facebook and then I'm going to move on to do something else, to actually spend the time. So here are five tips next time you are in front of your phone or tablet or whatever. Think about maybe looking at five different areas. So first and foremost, Think about the customers who shared your photos or product recommendations, companies who missions you're really into, brands or companies you partner with, blogs or new sites you find interesting, relevant, and even cute and funny accounts that you, you wanted to add some positivity. Because this is about taking other people's content, liking it and sharing it. So when you're struggling for something to do, go to that list, pick those people and engage. Don't post. So if you want a tip for tomorrow or even this afternoon, don't post on social media for 24 hours. What? Yes. Just engage. Listen, like, share, comment. Just engage but if you are posting yourself the key thing is not to leave those comments left behind a burger king a fantastic example of this they are i know they may have the resources but they're on it they are on it and you're worth checking their feed on likes of twitter to see they're engaging all the time now as i mentioned earlier one thing that you're very keen to do is always review the results of what is working and what is not. And so here is our list for every week, which posts are getting the highest number of engagement, which posts get the best type of engagement, which ones are ignored, and are there any platforms where your engagement rate remain low? That is the best advice I can give you. Now, when I look at myself, just very personally, 
I'm very active on social media, but not under my own guise. I do it on behalf of other clients. But for me, purely personally, I tend to fish in the LinkedIn pond. That's where I feel it's most relevant for me and where it's probably the platform I know maybe the best. So I would tend to think of myself, not to mean a one trick pony, but you, you becoming an authority and expert in your field. And LinkedIn probably has fantastic, probably the best insights. So when you are posting and you are engaging, you can probably get the best idea of what's working and what's not. And a good example of this is the other day, I saw a post there that, that someone was putting up a poll about how much he disliked people doing polls. And it got a fantastic amount of engagement. So he was actually breaking the rules. LinkedIn, like many of them do, Twitter put polls in there. And this one was, I'm fed up of seeing polls. Are you, are you fed up of seeing them again? But again, it was great for engagement. And I'm going to mention the football last time, but there was an interesting post as well, which cross-pollinated cross between LinkedIn and Twitter about, it was about not talking about football, but talking about football songs and which one resonated with you both, but most. So it was seeing the major topic, but from a different angle. People are familiar, obviously, with three lines and, and, and the like but also taking the issue from a different perspective. And that is engagement. Two, two people got massive engagement because they looked at the problem from a, or the challenge from a slightly different perspective. They rewrote the rules. And I often use the phrase, Try to take a calculated risk so you can get engaged in that way with fantastic photography as we've seen already from many of the big brands like Starbucks and Oreo and the like, but also for yourselves. Let's, let's not be one of the crowd. Let's lead. As I mentioned earlier, and you saw that when we did, we did the Twitter, you can just go simply on to Instagram under Insights and you've got all the information you need. But to be active on um, and have this information, you need a business account so to make sure you've got that in place. But every time you post and every time you are involved, please check how it's performing. Now, video is in, video is here to stay. It is probably the driving force of a lot of activity in social media. So if you are intending to get seek great engagement, think about using video. And there's three areas you can probably focus on, a Q&A, a tutorial, or a how-to, or a explainer. For many of you on the, on the afternoon session, you may wish to, to use that. It doesn't have to be a Hollywood production. The cameras are there. You can do all the, uh, the work um, on the different platforms, which I'll show you in a moment. But video is a great way of getting engagement. A good example I saw not so long ago, I saw a client doing the old uh, talking to camera, and he was like this, you know, stiff as a board, and he couldn't get it right. So they actually used it, the old bloopers approach. And, and, and so a whole different approach in, in doing it, as opposed to the sort of stiff archetypal one-to-one -one headshot, Alan Bennett's talking heads, they, they actually made light of it. So I've even seen it where the people have made the phone ring while someone's doing a one-to-one, -one, so it's kind of an accidental kind of scenario. But again, it's very real and very memorable. So, but there are, mobile video editing apps. Personally, I've only used Magisto and Quick. I can't speak knowledge of the other two, but then there's some great apps to follow for creating your own little videos. And if you want something a little bit more high tech, you've got iMovie, Movie Maker, YouTube editor for the software, or the video on the right hand side under that square was made is, is a 
Oh, point. Yeah. Isn't that clever? Switch this for a moment. Yoga. Stretch down, let it stretch. Dead dog. <laughs> Man, a second. Great. Just a minute, man. Oh, that's better. I feel better for that. Oh, that was made on Microsoft PowerPoint. Oh, hang on a second. I knew I shouldn't have done that. That was made on Microsoft PowerPoint. So it just shows you. And I can't click on to the next slide. That's not, it's only showing again. Oh, ow. where are we? We've done more than 10. I don't know why I'll keep going. Competitions. Who likes a competition? <laughs> This uh, what a great thing to do. And so, you know, even things like this, the great places to go. Excited to launch a product, the Birchbox, and there you are. You can take part in a competition. If some of you, I know there's somebody on this webinar who's got a product to sell online. How about we all like to win something, don't we? I've never won any of these myself, but you know, they're all, I like to take part. And great way of collecting data. Now, and also don't be frightened. Again, we live in a group on culture. Again, there's no reason why you've got good engagement. You can't do special offers. Again, fantastic. Very simple message 50% of our favorite, sort wrong, or American way. Right? But again, simple ways in which you can seek engagement. Now, the one thing to remember with the likes of Instagram algorithm that you can actually comment on your own posts and it works like linkedin does it's about time specific you post and nobody answers quickly make your um, post won't perform as well get your mates to help you out now make it about people or dogs well a fantastic a uh, campaign that took place in lockdown number one when the museum, the Getty Museum was closed, encouraging its uh, customers, visitors, stakeholders to replicate famous uh, pictures. And, and uh, there we go. Fantastic thing to do. Get your audience engaged. But who doesn't like a dog? Look at that. Are you focused on the dog or the watch? Well, either way, there's a brand association. Now, how many people are going, ah, oh, ah, oh, oh. First they steal your bed. No, first they, can't even read. First they steal your heart. Then they steal your bed. Ah. Oh. oh, by the way, you can buy a watch from me as well. But again, fantastic image. Great way in which you have brand association with the watch. There we go. Think about that. And I think we're coming to the end soon. But don't forget, if you want engagement, how can you get great engagement? By finding people to do the work for you or to become advocates for you. So think really carefully when it comes to mentioning people in posts. Look at your followers. Look who's got the most followers. Look who's getting the most engagement. Mention them, but mention those with the greatest influence. Twitter's fantastic for this, as well as Instagram. They show you who are your, you know, in numerically, numerically, who's got the most followers. And then you can find other people. Often I know there's a client of mine who's, who's a brewery, and they, they're all, they, they've got the sommeliers and the likes as their major advocates. They've got more followers than the brewery themselves. Think about using your followers as a gateway to more activity. So tagging them in, mentioning them, sharing their posts, becoming friends with a you know with a head boy, as it were, to use the um, school analogy yet again. And to look for influencers back to here, mentioned by Sumo twice now, great places to go to find influences in your sphere. And don't forget, you can still work the groups, 
be active on Facebook in the groups, to be active on LinkedIn, especially LinkedIn from a business perspective, you may find very salient and representative groups for what you do, but to be part of the party. But don't forget, this ultimately is about how much. So there's different tools to use, social pilot, rank ranger, etc., to get a clear measurement in place on your return on investment. Mm -hmm. So it comes that time of day again. Give me a second, a bit emotional. Um, the final Simon's final thoughts. <laughs> What's he going to say? I don't know. I can't remember. It's a while since put it together. He said, there we go. Thoughts of the day. Engage. Don't just post. Remember that? 24 hours. Don't do a thing. You get out on social media and you, you don't post. Otherwise, you've done the naughty step. You engage. You comment. You like. You share. And when you are posting, don't sell, just share with the exceptions I mentioned that you may wish to choose to, to offer promotions and discounts and competitions, but they're often geared around particular events, not a regular occurrence. So engage, don't post, and think about what you want your audience to do. So it's that call to action and thinking very much about whether you want them to click through whatever it is you want them to do, make sure that's as part of your activity. And finally, just to be serious for a moment, don't forget one of the most representative things one can do is to be exactly that, be representative on social media. So you don't need me to tell you the downside of social media. You saw that at the weekend where, well, all I can say is that um, Neanderthals behaved exactly like that. So maybe, maybe also to be really thoughtful about what you post and how it can be construed because it is for everybody. But unfortunately, some people use it for the wrong reasons. Thank you very much today for attending. I hope you, uh, you brought a smile to your face, you've got your pen and paper out, you've made some tips, and you had more than 10 ways in which you can engage. But just remember, think really carefully about you, measuring your engagement, about how to engage, and making it very much the two-way street. So I hope you go away with some thoughts, and we're back again as <laughs> We're back again. We'll be back here next week. And I think we're going to be on all about blogs. So it will be my pleasure to serve you next week. And in the meantime, I think I'm going to go to the chat line and uh, see if anyone has said anything that may be questions. Oh, I would. Oh, thank you to Kay and thank you to Heather. I certainly uh, hope you found it beneficial. If anyone has any questions, I'm more than happy to uh, answer them or avoid the difficult ones. If not, I will close up for the day. Not I'm trying to get rid of you, of course. Well, thank you, Sally. It's very kind of you. I uh, hope you've enjoyed it. That's the most important thing. Well, if not, if there's no, I'll have a beat you into submission. Well, if I have, oh. well, thank you to Danielle. Thank you to James. Remember where you can find us. You'll find me here every, every Tuesday, two o'clock. And hopefully imparting a little bit of wisdom that you can use in your day-to-day -day life. And if you've done that, that's, that's the main thing. So, same time, same back channel. Thank See you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.